Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Atmosera. And today we're going to be taking a look at how to set up Docker for Windows containers using a manual install when you don't want to use something like Docker Desktop. Hi guys, today I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to set up Docker on Windows so you can use it with Windows containers in DevTools. Now there's probably other ways to do this. I'm going to show you how to do this in a more manual way so that you can get a little bit more exposure to how Docker actually works on Windows and then how you can wire up all the tools to use Docker on Windows to build containers on Windows and then push those up to things like registries and what have you. The first thing we need to do is enable container support on Windows before we get the CLI utilities and the daemon installed. So to do that, I need to open up Windows and go to um, Add Remove Programs. And this is going to open up this window right here. And then you click on Programs and Features and then click on Turn Off Windows Features. Now you'll need a version of Windows that supports this, but um, most versions of Pro Windows will, on Windows 10 and Windows 11, you'll have the option to install uh, containers. So uh, you'll also need administrative access to it as well. So to do that, you just simply click Containers and Hyper-V and click OK. It'll run through a, a utility that will install those features, and then you may have to reboot. And once you're rebooted, you should be able to come back into your environment and you will have the containers enabled, but you still need to install Docker in order to use that container support on Windows. So the first thing that you'll need to do is grab the binaries for this. And you can get these from Docker's website. You can go to download.docker.com slash win slash static slash stable slash x86 underscore 64. And I'll put a link in the video description down below. There's basically two versions you can pick from, Docker 17 and Docker 20. Just grab the latest if you're not um, sure which one to pick. Pick Docker 20 and then whatever the latest uh, build for that is, which is uh, 20.10.17 right here. I'm going to go ahead and download that. And once you have that, we'll extract the contents of this and we'll put it in a folder. So once you have that downloaded, just open up the zip file and you'll have this Docker folder here. And this Docker folder contains a couple of executables. You have Docker D, which is the Docker daemon, which we'll be starting. And this is the CLI right here. And then these are just some CLI plugins that you can use for integrations. But we're mostly concerned about Docker D and Docker.exe right here. Now, uh, the first thing we need to do is create a folder for these. Now, what you can do is just take this Docker folder and copy it and then go out to someplace on your drive and drop it. So I'm going to put it here in the root of my uh, C drive. It's just called Docker right here. You can put that in program files if you want to. But we just need a folder for these files. And the next thing we're going to do is add these to the path variable so that we can find these on the CLI. If you don't want to do that and you want to skip a step, you can actually drop those executables in the C colon backslash Windows slash System32 or another folder that is already part of the path. And you can put them in this folder, although that's probably not a good thing to do because it'd be kind of foreign executable. So the best thing to do is just create a folder and have that right here ready to go. And then we can go over here to our environmental variables and add the path to this folder. To edit the path variable, we're going to open up our environment variables. And you can do that by opening your start venue and just start typing in environment. And you'll see a link for edit system environment variables right there and that'll open up the system properties and you click on environment variables right here which will launch this dialog now the path that we're going to be editing is the one down here in system variables but there is one right here we're going to looking at system variables right here and then we're going to edit this path right here and we're going to click new and just simply add c colon backslash docker to the bottom of that list and then a trailing backslash and click ok and then now the command line utilities, be it PowerShell or CMD, will be able to find the path to those Docker executables that we just downloaded. While we're here, I'm going to add another environment variable that we're going to be using when we use our Docker uh, CLI utility for the Docker client. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new one here. And this one's called Docker underscore host. And the variable is going to be TCP colon slash slash 127 dot zero dot zero dot zero dot one or two zeros and a single one 
and then we're going to put in a port number of 2376. So this is used by the Docker client to know where to look for the Docker a daemon, which is going to be running on the same system. And this is running on localhost. So there's some minimal security issues with this, but if you're okay with that, this is a fine way to do that. It's not publicly exposed. It's only exposed to the localhost here. And once I have those variables edited and added, I'm going to click okay. And that will save those variables. So once we have the variables added, now I can test this to see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and launch a command prompt and I'm going to open up an administrative mode. You don't have to do this in administrator mode. You can just simply run it like, like a regular user, but we're going to be using the same one later on when we do something else with this. If you just type in Docker, you should get uh, some kind of list of commands by typing that in. You should be able to see uh, the various things that you have available to you in the CLI. And you can verify that you're running the right version by doing dash V. And this should point to whatever version I just downloaded, which is 20.10.17. So I know everything is in the right place and it's able to find the executables that I just downloaded and I set the path variable for. Now we can actually start the Docker daemon, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you just want to run this inside of the uh, CLI and not make it a permanent, if you just want to use it for temporary dev purposes, you can start a CLI and just simply start Docker D by typing in Docker D and then giving it a variable that is tells it which host to use. So I'm going to just paste this command in like this. So you have Docker D dash H and you have TCP colon colon slash localhost 2376, which is the, the same path for the environment variable that we just set inside of our environment variables for the client to find. So if I start this, it's actually going to start Docker D on this particular port and this particular host, which is my you know, local host here. And it'll, it'll start like this. You'll get some logging uh, that looks like that. So I have another instance of command prompt here. Now, um, once that's all set, I should be able to type in Docker and do like a PS and get back a list of containers, which currently there are none running. Uh, if I do PS-A, I think I might have one that's not currently running. Uh, it uh, was messing with uh, a little while ago when I was playing with this stuff. And, um, but you can see that it is able to interact with the Docker daemon right here. So I know that the Docker daemon can run and I can interact with it like this. However, if I wanted to make this more permanent and I want to be able to use this on a more continuous basis, it might be more convenient to make this a service on Windows, which is actually fairly easy to do, which I'm going to show you how to do that now. To make this permanent, I'm going to, I stopped the Docker daemon right here by hitting Control C and I'm going to run a command. It's called SC, which is used for creating and deleting and editing services that are running on Windows. So to do this, I'm basically just going to uh, create a service, a Windows service, by running this command. So SC create is what I want to call it, call, and I'm going to call my service Docker, and I'm going to get a, a path right here. And I'm going to specify the full path because this is going to be running under a user account that may or may not be able to read the path variables. So you want to give it the full path name. Uh, so I'm saying C colon backslash Docker, uh, Docker D.exe. And then I'm going to do dash dash run dash service. And then I'm going to specify the dash H parameter to tell it where I want to start this service for localhost 2376. So let's go ahead and run that. And that is going to create the service. Now it didn't start it, but I can start it using SC. If I do SC start Docker, um, and uh, that will start it. And uh, if you want to see the state of it using SC, you can do QC, which is just querying uh, the daemon. And then it's uh, telling me it's, it's running demand start is the start type. Now, if I want to change it to automatic start, you can do that using this, or you can just open up services on your box. And you can first look into your um, services here and you'll see one called Docker and it's set to manual right here. You can change the properties to you know automatic or del automatic delayed start or uh, manual. I, I have it currently set to manual, but if I put it on automatic, uh, that should be fine too. And that way it'll start every time my machine boots up and if I restart my machine, my machine whatever it might be. So uh, I have it set to automatic now. And so I have my Docker daemon running in the background and now I can use my Docker uh, CLI to interact with that. So if I do Docker PS-A, it's going to be running as a service now, 
but I still get the list of that, that container that's not running. So this means that I should be able to use not only Docker uh, CLI from a command prompt or PowerShell, I should be able to use my dev tools with this as well. So let's go ahead and create a project in Visual Studio and then add Docker support to it and see if we can make that run using uh, this instance of Docker D that I have running on my machine as a service. So to make sure that we have everything we need, that we're going to make sure that we have Docker support enabled on our instance of Visual Studio. I have two instances installed. I haven't installed 2022 yet. I do have uh, 2017 and 2019 installed here. And I'm going to uh, modify this. Uh, you can do it for any install that you currently have on your box. So uh, to enable Docker support, just click on individual comp components and, and search for Docker. And then you will see uh, container development tools and Visual Studio support for Kubernetes. Click on container development tools if you want to use that and then click OK and it will install those um, utilities and features into Visual Studio. And once you have that installed, um, then you can launch Visual Studio and you can use the built-in tools with Visual Studio uh, for Docker development. Now, if you're using Visual Studio Code, you would have to add the plugin, but the point of this is not to show you how to use all the tools, but it's to validate that I can use this manually installed version of the Docker D with my dev environment. So uh, to do this, I'm gonna create a new project and I'm gonna add in a new ASP.NET. Let's just use ASP.NET Core Web App, which uh, would, and you can use uh, any one of these uh, different ones right here. As long as it's an ASP.NET app, that's all I really care about. Um, I'm just going to use this one and then I'm going to click next and just take the defaults on this and you'll see that it has enable Docker right here and you can pick the window. Now I'm not going to enable it right here, but you can do it right here. I'm going to show you how to do it to an existing project once you have it. Um, and let's go ahead and click create and uh, this will um, create a new um, project. Now I could have used a different .NET version, but this is fine for this demo. Uh, it's the same regardless of what version of .NET Core you're using or even .NET Full Framework. So uh, once you have the project created, I'm going to go ahead and run this uh, just as a standalone app. And uh, this will launch it, use Kestrel rather than IIS Express uh, to, to run the app. And I should see just a basic uh, template uh, stamp for uh, an app. And it says, okay, welcome to my web app. Okay, here I got Web Application 9. And it's got you know two pages right there so nothing fancy there okay now that i've got that um now i could have enabled docker support when i created the project but if you have an existing project uh, you can create docker support for this simply by right clicking on the project and then going to uh, the add menu and then add docker support right here and this is going to give me a dialogue to tell me which os i want to use i'm going to use windows since that's the kind of the point of this video i'm going to select windows and that's gonna add a Docker file to this project. And that Docker file is going to uh, look like this right here. And just to kind of walk through this, this is using, um, it's using from the Microsoft Container Registry, and this is just the, the Docker file to build it. It's building the file and then uh, using um, a multi-stage build to build the, the output, which would be just a DLL file. And then of course, then there's the injury point for that, that will start it, that will copy files after it's been built using a build container. So this is a pretty standard uh, looking uh, Docker file for any web project that you might be using in not net core. Uh, and uh, this is for net, uh, net core 3.1 or, or a newer version of .NET if you're using that. So once I have this done, I can I can test this using Docker. So if I uh, have my ability to switch between IS Express and the, the web app, I'm gonna choose Docker. And then we should be able to see it using Docker down here in the, the CLI output that is gonna be running Docker commands using the Docker CLI against that Docker daemon that I'm actually running right here. And so it's building it and then it's going to start the container. It built really fast for me because I was using this for another project already. So I already had this version of the Docker image I needed downloaded. If it's the first time running, it might take a while because these are some rather large images, but you can see here that it's that it did build the image. It started it, and if I, if I come over here to the uh, command prompt and I type in Docker, 
ps-a I should see a running command right here that is the uh, web application 9 right there and this is web application 8 that was uh, testing uh, with a minute ago um, uh, that is indeed running my container right here so uh, that is just validating what Visual Studio did to create this. So my dev tools are integrating with this manually installed version of the Docker Day. And so I can use the integration with whatever uh, framework I'm using, we a do a code, Visual Studio Code, uh, Visual Studio, or whatever tools integrate with Docker, working with that Docker D that I have installed manually. And you can use other tools to install it. I just did it this way because it does give you the ability to control the Docker D where it resides, what version you want to use, and many other aspects of it, as well as give you a little bit more exposure to how Docker is installed on Windows.